Welcome to lesson three using a variable to describe a pattern. For some students, when they learn about variables, they feel a bit scared and overwhelmed. But as you will learn, if you give yourself a chance and trust in your abilities, you will see that variables are actually kind of fun and not as big and scary as they might appear. So let's begin by starting with an example. So here we have a diagram of a growing pattern. Figure one here has two circles. Figure two has four circles. Figure three has six. Figure four has eight circles. And figure five has 10 circles. So we can record the information about this growing pattern in a table. Pause the video and complete this table by writing down the number of circles in each figure number. Once you have done that, continue watching. So this is what you should have written down in your table. If we try to figure out how the pattern is growing, most of you would probably say, well, we start at two and then we add two more each time. And that is correct. But another way to describe how this pattern is growing is by using the figure numbers and trying to figure out how does this figure number turn into this one? How does this one turn into this one? How does a three turn into a six? How does a four turn into an eight? And how does a five turn into a 10? So pause the video and think about that for a moment. Most of you probably have figured out that we're taking the figure number here and we're multiplying it by two each time and that gives us the number of circles. So two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight, and five times two is 10. So these little sentences here are called equations. So in other words, we can say that the figure number times two is going to equal the number of circles. So how many circles would there be, for example, if we were on figure number 10? Well, figure number 10, if we take that and multiply it by two, we get 20. So figure number 10 would have 20 circles. Now we can write this expression here, or this equation, in a little bit of a simpler way. Instead of writing big long words like this figure number, we're just going to replace these two words with a single letter. And we're gonna replace it with the letter F in this example. It really doesn't matter what letter you use, but we have to pick a letter. So let's look at what this expression looks like. So our expression is simply f times 2. f stands for the figure number, and we multiply by 2 to get the number of circles. So let's try one more example. What if we had 23, figure number 23? Actually, let's make it a little bit simpler. Let's make figure number 15. So 15 is the figure number, and we multiply that by 2. You probably know that 15 times 2 is 30. So figure number 2, or sorry, figure number 15 would have 30 circles in it. Figure number 10 has 20 circles in it. Figure number 5 has 10 circles in it. Figure number 2 has 4 circles in it. So we could figure out the number of circles in any figure number by using our expression right here, f times 2. So let's try an example together. This time we're going to use the expression f plus 4, and we're going to try to figure out the number of circles for these different figure numbers. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can fill in the number of circles. If you can't, we'll do one example together. 
So remember, the letter F here is a variable. A variable just means a number that varies, that changes. The figure number changes. It's not always the same. That's why we put a letter in its place. So let's say we are going to look at figure number one. So figure one is the number one. And the expression says that we add four. So everybody knows that one plus four is equal to five. So here in the number of circles, we are going to put five. So there you go. That's one example done for you. Pause the video and you fill in the rest of the table. So if we use our expression for figure number two, we go two plus four, and we know that that is equal to six. For figure number three, three plus four is seven. For figure four, we have four plus four, and that is equal to eight. And finally, figure number five, we have nine, because five plus four is equal to nine. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense with this example. In this lesson on using variables to describe patterns, we learned about expressions. Expressions are just simple number sentences with an operation such as this one, n times 6. An expression can have a variable in it as well, which is simply a letter that represents a number that changes. Because the number isn't always the same, we can't really put a number in here because it changes. So we hold the place of that changing number with a letter. And it really doesn't matter what letter we use. It could be any letter of the alphabet, but it should be a lowercase letter. If n were 2, then this expression would be 2 times 6. And the answer, of course, is 12. If n was 5, then the expression would read 5 times 6. And the answer to that is 30. So please review the video again if you need to, ask your teacher for help, and have fun using variables to describe patterns.